Hello, welcome to the AIA Solutions channel. In this video, I'm going to walk through an example to illustrate how unknown forces and unknown dimensions could be determined for a given problem in statics. So we're going to quickly um, address this question. And it says the system shown consists of two colors a and b which can slide freely and are connected by a string with tension t and we're told to calculate the length of the string the value of the tension t and the force needed to keep the system in equilibrium given that the color a is pulled by force of for new things we were to calculate for three unknowns tension length of the string and the force f so to um, work through this problem of course this is our space diagram and we have to address the first part of the problem that requires us to calculate the length of the string l to calculate the length of the string we would need to find the vectorial sum of the length ls the length ly and the length lz these three components when added vectorially will give the length of the string l so one can say l is equal to lsi lyj and lzk knowing these values and one can easily find the determinant of that vectorial sum to find it to get the magnitude which will be equal to the length of the string ls is equal to 180 as can be seen from the given dimension in the space diagram we have that ly is equal to 110 meters as can be seen for this from the space diagram as well and lz is 400 meters as can be seen from the space diagram one can easily calculate the length of the string from here and if that is evaluated one will get l to be 452.22 meters as the length of the string the next item we want to determine is the tension on the string. To find the tension on the string, one may need to produce a free body diagram of a part of concern, a part that um, connects the tension, that's the string and the color A. So to do that, we bring out the rod in which the tension is attached. So we place the tension by just a force or a vector term. Then we'll bring in our four kilonewton force. Once we have all this, our free body diagram has been produced. So we have our space diagram and free body diagram. Next is to take these forces to their component form so that we can quickly and easily apply the principle of equilibrium to find the unknown. So to take um, the first force, which is the tension T to its component form, we may need to find the displacement vector. That's how far this force would have moved if it is to travel from point A to point B. And that will give us a value AB is equal to ABS plus ABY plus ABZ. These are the different values in the respective coordinates that is needed to go through to get to point B from point A. And to identify these different values, one may need to quickly see how one will move from point A to point B, the first movement would be would be along the Z axis, and that value is 400 meters. So we can say that ABZ is minus 400 meters and it's minus 400 because it's moving in the opposite direction as the Z axis. Then, then, the next we may want to see how this will move along the Y axis. And one can quickly see that along the y axis, one would the displacement value is a 110 meters. So one can say ABY is equal to 110 meters. And it is plus because it is in the positive direction of the y axis. And finally, the movement in the x axis will take us to our final destination, which is the point B. And to and to move along this and the displacement in the x axis is equal to 180 meters so we can say that abs is 180 meters and is minus because 
it's in the opposite direction as the x axis so invariably we've gotten our displacement vector to be minus 180i plus 100g minus 400k and we can easily use this equation to find the magnitude of this displacement vector so if we do that we can get the magnitude to be 452.22 now we've got in our free body diagram we've got in our displacement vector for tension t and we've got in our magnitude of the displacement vector of tension t to be 452.22 meters and with this one can easily find the unit vectors the unit vector is useful to take the tensional force to its component form and we can easily determine the unit vector based on the displacement vector and its magnitude which can be simplified to get us a value of yt which is our unit vector to be equal to minus 0.398i plus 0.2432j minus 0.8845k having gotten the unit vector one can find the tension in its component form to be the magnitude of the tension t multiplied by its unit vector and that will give us a simple equation that contains t in all its component form having taken the tension t to its component form we may also want to take the 4 newton force to component form or to vector form and because f1 is acting along the z axis we know that it's going to be equal to 0i plus 0j plus 4k so invariably we've gotten our value for f1 and our value for t1 in their component forms so going back to our space diagram and our free body diagram we also have determined the tension and the value of our 4 kN force in their component forms. So we can call our equilibrium equation quickly. We know that the sum of forces in the z axis is going to be zero. And we are working with this because we know that F1 has components just in the z axis. And that can help us find the value of T if we equate, if we equate the sum of all Z components to zero, we can from here easily determine our value T. So having done that, we have that z minus 0 0.8845t plus 4 will be equal to 0. And from this equation, one can easily find t to be 4 over 0 0.8845. And t therefore will be equal to 4.52 kN. So our tensional force t is 4.52 kN. Now we have gotten our value of tension T, then we're going to progress to determine the last item, which is F. So we're going to go, we're going to proceed to determine F, which is the force acting on color B. To determine this force F, we may need to produce another free body diagram that captures the value of F effectively and the tension that is affecting color B. So we we'll start by bringing out the rod that contains color B. Then we bring in our forces. The first one is F acting on color B. Then the second one is the tension force that is acting on it. So given our space diagram, we've got in another free body diagram that captures the force F we want to determine and our tension T. Let's not forget we've already determined the value for t earlier. So to progress with this, we are going to we are going to take each of these forces based on their free body diagram to their component form. Let's not be quick to think that the tension force in its component form will be the same as the one we had previously. So the component form of a force is based on the free body diagram or it's based on its point of application. For this case, we are going to need to determine another displacement vector from point B to point A. And that displacement vector BA will be 
the displacement vector that we use to determine the unit vector that will help us to take the value of tension or that will help us to take the tension to its component form. Thus, to determine that, we're going to, we're going to see how the displacement would occur from point B to point A. So first, along the axis, there's a movement from B to point O. And the displacement is 110 meters in the y axis. So as a result of that, BAY will be minus 110 meters. And it is minus because it's in the opposite direction of the y axis. In the same vein, we're going to move along the x axis. And to move along the x axis would have traveled by a displacement of 180 meters. And thus, BAX will be plus 180 meters. And it is positive because it is in the same direction with the X axis. And finally, there's going to be a movement along the Z axis by a displacement of 400 meters. So thus, BAZ will be plus 400 meters. And it is positive because it is in the same direction with the Z axis. So as a result of that, our displacement vector is thus obtained as minus 180i plus 110j minus 400k and we can easily find the magnitude of this displacement vector based on the formula that is given and our displacement vector will be calculated easily to be equal to 45 to be equal to 452.22 meters Now we have our free body diagram and we have and we have determined the displacement vector and the magnitude of the displacement vector as well. So having gotten that, we may want to quickly find the unit vector using its formula. And the unit vector, because we have all our variables, can thus easily be calculated to be 0.3980i minus 0.2432j plus 0.8845k. Once this is obtained, one can quickly find the tension by multiplying the magnitude of T with the unit vector. And if that is done, we can quickly get a value for our tension T in its component form as shown. Next, we want to take the, the force of F to its component form. And because F is acting in the Y axis and it's upwards, we can quickly write that force F1 will be equal to 0i plus fg plus 0k. So we've gotten our tension in its component form and we've gotten the force that, we've that we are looking for in its component form as well. So bringing back our space diagram and our free body diagram and some of the things we've estimated, the tension in its component form and our force value in its component form. We want to call our equation of equilibrium that is relevant for this case. We know that the sum of forces in the y direction is zero. So, so taking all y components of the two forces and summing them up and equating to zero, we have a new equation. And this equation, based on this equation, we can easily find the value of f. Noting that Rearranging the equation, we have f is equal to 0.2432t. Meanwhile, we've calculated t earlier to be 4.52 kilonewtons. So we have that f is equal to 0.2432 times 4.52. And we can toss it to get our value for f to be 1.10 kilonewton. So therefore, We've calculated our length of string L to, to be 452.22 meters. We've also calculated our tension T to be 4.52 kilonewtons. And, and as well as our value of F to be 1.10 kilonewtons. And these are the three unknowns we are required to find. To conclude, for this problem, we're given value for LS, LY, and LZ, which were the dimensions that we needed to calculate the unit vector of tension T and a force in color A to be 4 kN. Then we've determined force in color B, tension T, and the length of the string. 
But the question may take another form such that we're given values of LS, LS, LZ, value of T, and force in color B. And we may be required to find maybe the force in color A alongside LY, which is the length in the x axis and the length of the string. Also, we could be given LX, LY, the length of the string, as well as the tension T, and may be required to find FA, FB, and LZ. Now, you may want to try some of all these, knowing all the values from what we've calculated thus far. You may want to try any of these conditions, whether when given LS, LZ, T, and FB to find FA, LS, LZ, or when given LS, LY, LT, that you can take these four variables and determine three other unknowns. So, therefore, any four variables can be given, and we may be required to calculate any three variables that are unknown and this will be all for now i want to thank you for watching